Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing owns the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, their Futures Exchange, and the London Metals Exchange. Alone, it's the sixth largest stock exchange in the world, but year to date, its stock price is way down, while the rest of the market is up. Is the company on sale and a potential buy now? We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating a fair value for Hong Kong exchanges and clearing. Then we're giving a rating to the business. This analysis is going to be intense but worth it. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Hong Kong exchanges and clearing for your stock portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, how has the company's stock performed? Right now, Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing trades for $38.04 per share. Year-to-date, their stock price is down 14%, while the S&P 500 is up 16%. In the last decade, Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing has compounded at 9% annually. Just recently, they started underperforming the market over this time. However, going back to when the business was listed over-the-counter in the United States, in the last 15 years, since the global financial crisis, they've beat the market. They're compounding at 10% annually. Right now, the company pays an above average 2.46% dividend yield. Their average dividend yield throughout this time is added to the returns in their stock price. What we're looking at here is their over-the-counter listing, stock ticker HKXCY. The company trades $8 below their 52-week high. They're trading $11.50 above their 52-week low. Hong Kong Exchanges is a big company. They have a $47 billion market cap. But the burning question is, why should we be paying close attention to the business? Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing is a vertically integrated securities exchange business offering listing, data, trading, clearing, and settlement services across equities, debt, and derivatives. HKEX, like Hong Kong itself, functions as a gateway between China and the rest of the world. HKEX serves as a preferred listing venue for Chinese companies outside of China and through the Connect scheme offers two-way trading for a growing group of financial products within the Shanghai Stock Exchange and Shenzhen Stock Exchange. Now let's dive deep into their numbers. All the numbers we're looking at are in US dollars. Metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. The average business earns a 7% return on capital. Looking for a benchmark that's double this can build in margin of safety based on the quality of their business. They've earned above average returns in all of these years, coming in as a percentage in the low to mid 20s. In an average year over this time, they earn around 25% returns on capital. These are more than three times better than a typical business. This is a huge check on our first metric. Metric number two, we're looking for growth. We want their revenues, net incomes, and free cash flows all to be up. This metric's all or nothing. We'll also include their numbers up until today, which don't get shown on this chart. In this time, Hong Kong Exchanges has grown their revenues by 26%. Their net incomes have grown by 24%. Most impressively, the company's free cash flows are up 59%. Great to see their free cash flows leading the growth charge because free cash flows the lifeblood of any business. Ultimately, a business is worth the sum of its free cash flows now and until judgment day discounted back by some reasonable rate of return. We'll be using two methods based on their free cash flows later on in our video to estimate their fair value. So stick around, you won't wanna miss it. With all three of these up, this is a check on metric number two. Metric number three, we want to see earnings per share growth. This looks at the company from the view of an individual shareholder. We learn their net incomes or their earnings have grown by 24% in our last metric. In these last five years, Hong Kong exchanges has diluted shareholders by 2%, issuing 2% additional shares outstanding. Their earnings have grown faster than their shareholder dilution, meaning their earnings per share are up. This is another check on our third metric. Can the business keep this strong performance going? Metric number four, we want to see free cash flow per share growth. A very similar story here. Their free cash flows have grown by 59%. This outpaces their shareholder dilution, meaning their free cash flows per share are up. With a check on metric number four, we're perfect through our first four metrics. But there's still one vital piece missing. You might think nailing returns on capital and having good growth is the key, but we haven't touched on the one thing that I truly believe sets Hong Kong exchanges apart, which is having these without using a lot of debt. Metric number five, we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the sum of their free cash flows in their last five fiscal years. In this time, Hong Kong exchanges has had negative net debt in all five years. This means they have cash left over after paying off their debt. They've also generated more than a billion dollars worth of free cash flow in all five years. Right now, the company has $3.9 billion in cash left on their balance sheet, and they've generated $7.2 billion of free cash flow in their last five fiscal years. 
This is a huge check on metric number five. The business looks like it's in a strong financial position, both having cash on their balance sheet and generating a lot of free cash flow. Flawless through our first five metrics, does Hong Kong exchanges have what it takes to go six for six and be a perfect select six stock? We'll find out right after we cover our bonus. We want their dividends to be covered by their free cash flows. Right now, Hong Kong exchanges pays an above average 2.46% dividend yield. They've grown their dividends throughout this time, although they have cut them from fiscal 2021 until 2022. At the same time, the company's also grown their free cash flows over this five-year period. Today, they're paying out a smaller percentage of their cash flows as dividends than they were in 2018. They're supporting these today and throughout this time. It's exactly what we're looking for. This is a check on our bonus. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want their five-year free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's the first of two different ways we're estimating a fair value for Hong Kong exchanges. Right now, the company has a $44.5 billion enterprise value. This looks at both their market cap and their net debt position. It views the company similar to it being a private business. In the last five years, we learned they generated $7.2 billion of free cash flow, meaning in an average year, they generate $1.4 billion of free cash flow. When that's divided by their enterprise value, we get a 3.1% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. On a current basis, the company produced $1.75 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When that's divided by their enterprise value, it gives us a 3.9% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. That's right in line with the yield from the 10-year treasury yet it's down from the risk premium we're looking for. Because of this, this is our first and only X of the day on metric number six. Don't just throw the business out. We still need to estimate their fair value per share and give our rating. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Hong Kong exchanges, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is based on the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. We're starting with Hong Kong Exchange's current free cash flows and using historical assumptions to grow these into the future. It's up to you to figure out if these will be accurate or not for the business. Hong Kong Exchange's has been very predictable in their past. That's no guarantee for the future. Assuming they grow their current free cash flows at 10% annually for the next decade, then in the following decade, assuming these grow at 5% annually, we'll add in their tangible book value to give an estimate of their net worth. If we want a 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett looks for from his investments, if today's valuation multiples are the same 20 years into the future, an estimate of Hong Kong Exchange's fair value per share is around $20. That's down $17 from their current stock price. Keep some key points in mind. Their high business predictability may not be the case going forward. Since the global financial crisis, the investing world was in one of their longest ever bull markets. Things have been especially crazy within the past handful of years. Huge amounts of trading volume have really benefited exchanges. All in all, this is coming off of a pretty interesting but pretty good time for the business. This discount rate is an estimate of their total returns to shareholders based on their free cash flows. It's a few percentage points above where they've been at historically. Keep in mind it includes both their average dividend yield and any potential gains in their stock price. Hong Kong Exchanges is also trading at a pretty high 32 times earnings and 27 times price to free cash flow. It's near the higher end of their historical valuations. It's something you want to keep in mind. The S&P 500 has historically traded around 15 times earnings on average. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. Now let's give our rating. We learn by analyzing Hong Kong exchanges and clearings, stock ticker HKXCY, that this company earns very high returns on capital in the mid-20s. They've grown strongly and consistently in each of the last five years, issuing just a couple of percentage points of additional shares. They maintain a strong financial position with nearly $4 billion of cash on their balance sheet, plus they generate a lot of free cash flow. The company's free cash flow to enterprise value yields may or may not look attractive compared to the yield of the 10-year treasury. Their current yield is right in line with it, while their average yield is slightly down. Hong Kong Exchanges has also supported a growing dividend in each of the last five years. Altogether, they check five of the six boxes on our Select 6 analysis, plus our bonus. Keep in mind this isn't financial advice. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, if today's valuation multiples are the same 20 years into the future, you believe those assumptions and you want a 15% rate of return like Warren Buffett, an estimate of their fair value is around $20 per share.
They last traded at those levels in the summer of 2014. When we look at all the factors of our analysis, Hong Kong exchanges and clearing looks like a great candidate for more research. If you liked today's video, subscribe to the channel for more.